We in Britain can be credited for the creation of some of the most iconic characters on television, such as Mr. Bean. Just popped out for lunch. <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine. He's a cheeky little engine, but six. Wallace and Gromit. And in there, Gromit, everything's under control. And Paddington Bear. Uh, yes, said Mr. Brown, trying hard to pretend that he had tea with a bear every day of his life. Characters full of charm, charisma, and sheer delightfulness, which not only made them popular back in the day, but still have them hold up to this very day, and is something that we, as a nation, are so proud of that we even hold these characters as part of our national identity. And then there's Mr. Blobby. An unholy, unhinged, unfathomable curse that we all try to collectively forget about. I hated Mr. Blobby when I was like, he terrified me more than anything else. Like, he looked like a fat, jaundiced baby. With his pink colour and yellow spots, resembling some horrific case of genital warts, his spring loaded eyes giving him the twitchy gaze of a cocaine addict, and a demonic grin which reminds me of salad fingers. And not only did he look like a grotesque abomination, but he also sounded like one. Only being able to speak his own name, but done so in an electronically altered voice, like some sort of demonic Pokemon that would even give Mr. Mime a run for his money. <laughs> Along with some other unusual sounds, which I could only describe as someone holding a microphone up to a horse while it's having a shag. <laughs> all tied nicely together with his short temper and violent tendencies, basically making him like a Mr. Bean character on Meh, who fell into a vat of acid and was jizzed on by a clown. And I'm sure some of you younger or non-UK viewers are thinking, wait, is this thing for real? And as much as I'd like to say otherwise, unfortunately, he is. Not only being a thing that actually existed, but also somehow being one of the most popular UK television characters of the 90s, leading to what was described as blobby mania, with merchandise, hit singles, and even a blobby land theme park. And we're now going to take a look at this pink mess of a blob fest, at his origins, his rise, and of course, his downfall. This is the story of one of Britain's biggest mistakes. Mr. Blobby. Mr. Blobby first appeared on UK television screens in 1992 and featured on Saturday night variety show Noel's House Party on the BBC, a popular show in the UK which was hitting 18 million viewers at its peak. And Ian recently performed in front of 15,000 people in an aircraft hangar. Yeah, yeah that's right. What would you get? A standing aviation? <laughs> Mr. Blobby was created as a fictional television character for a prank segment, where various celebrities would think that Mr. Blobby was a legitimate character for a children's TV show, and would try to give an educational demonstration of their profession, whilst Mr. Blobby would act unprofessionally, and begin causing chaos on set. <laughs> this would have received a wide range of reactions depending on the celebrity, with some absolutely loving it, and others clearly not. I'll be back, shaking. Jack, put some little blobs on there like that. <laughs> I'm not shaking, they say never worked with animals and kids, you can get that. With my favourite of these reactions going to Valerie Singleton. As credit to her, she really does try to maintain a professional standard despite all of the chaos going on around her. But, but you must have my check card so that you can check that my signature is the same as the one on the check. Look, look, look. Noel Edmonds would then reveal himself at the end of the skit, and everyone would have a good laugh about the whole thing. Now, although Noel would be the one to reveal himself at the end, Mr. Bobby was actually played by Barry Killaby, with Noel only swapping out for the reveal scene. Now, despite my reservations on Mr. Blobby as a character, I do want to give credit to the suit actor, as he would always give such a high energy performance, which could not have been easy in such an outfit. Barry would even comment on such, stating in an interview, people think it's easy bouncing around saying blobby, but they should try it. It was exhausting and demanding. 
And given that a lot of the characters' actions were improvised, I thought he did a really good job. There's one sketch where Mr. Blobby is doing a blind date segment over the phone, the prop phone he was using accidentally breaks, and so Barry improvises it as a pipe. I thought that was pretty well done. Barry would actually go on to play the character right up to 2012, to which Paul Denson would take over there afterwards. Because of the whole pranking nature of the show, Mr. Blobby was intentionally given an uncanny and creepy design, adding to the humour that these celebrities actually thought that something so repulsive could actually be a children's television character. But then again, in the UK we also had shows such as Animals of Farthing Wood which were made for kids, so perhaps it really isn't that much of a stretch to believe. The prank segments proved incredibly popular amongst audiences, along with the character of Mr. Blobby himself, and so Blobby Mania as it was called, began to take over Britain. Mr. Blobby's popularity, however, was a bit of a double-edged sword, as sure, it's great that the character is a huge hit, but now that everyone recognises him, you can't repeat the same prank formula. So they had to think of something different. They would begin to do crossovers, where Mr. Blobby would appear in other TV shows and start wreaking havoc with his psychotic behaviour. He would now also star in his own comedy sketches, either having him paired up with Noel Edmonds in trying to perform some basic tasks, or we would simply follow him around on his day to day life, such as shopping, getting new clothes, and going on holiday. We would even start getting an expansion on the character himself, as it was revealed that he not only had a wife, but even worse, a child. What's that? What's that noise? What's that noise? What's going on there? Yeah, that's right. To the nation's horror, Mr. Blobby was breeding. Think about that. This cracked out, sentient piece of STI material has not only gotten himself laid, but has also found the love of his life and formed a family. Whilst you sit there alone in a darkened room with one hand down your pants. Good lord only knows what the blobby sex must have sounded like. Now, being a child of the 90s, I actually had Mr. Blobby on VHS, and I remember watching these sketches when I was younger. And admittedly, I actually kind of liked them, and even watching them again now, still find charm in them. Take the top of the paper and let the roll fall to the ground. I think the chaotic nature of Mr. Blobby, paired with the contrasting seriousness of the people around him still works. And I just love how casually people accept this unhinged monstrosity in their day to day lives. The look of this checkout woman's face when Blobby approaches her till is just like, yeah, I don't get paid enough for this shit. And the fact that Mr. Blobby finds a random shopping trolley, throws all of its contents out, and the original owner then comes back to it and just casually walks away like nothing has happened. Like, yep, don't say anything, Sarah. Just carry on with your day. You have a family at home that needs you. But I do think a bit of the humour is lost from the former prank sketches, as the reactions of people are now scripted instead of being genuine. Blobby merchandise also began to expand, in which you could buy practically anything, and I mean anything, from dolls and plush toys, to slippers, towels, egg cups, food products, and even condiment shakers. Honestly, I'm surprised there wasn't even something like a blobby dildo. Oh god. In 1994, Millennium Interactive released Mr. Blobby the video game, titled Mr. Blobby, which they clearly put as much effort into the title as they did the video game itself, as it's basically just a shameless reskin of Super Troll Islands. In 1993, Mr. Blobby would even release a Christmas track titled Mr. Blobby. Seriously, the creativity is astounding which was actually voted the number one UK single, beating both Meatloaf and Take That, topping the UK chart for three weeks. I would say that I'm shocked, but then again, we are also the nation that voted the chicken song as number one in 1986.
Though it is worth mentioning that the Christmas song hasn't exactly aged well and has since been slammed by critics, with a critic at MTV slating that Bobby, quote unquote, tried to kill music with what might be the worst song of all time. Ow. But that didn't stop Mr. Blobby from then releasing an entire album titled Mr. Blobby, which would feature amazing song classics such as this. Oh, my Blobby had a farm. Blobby, Blobby, Blob. Huh? There would also be the song Christmas in Blobbyland, which didn't see anywhere near the success of the previous one, coming in at number 36 on the charts, and was once again voted as the worst festive song ever by British Christmas shoppers in both 2011 and 2015. Mr. Blobby even had his own set of theme parks. One based at the Cricket St. Thomas in Somerset, another based in Pleasurewood Hills, but probably the most notable of all these was the Happy Mount Park in Morecambe, which opened in 1994. Which, to cut a long story short, was a financial disaster, not only falling well below the expected visitor attendance, but also causing massive uproar from the local residents as the location of the park was built on an existing public park so locals weren't too best pleased that a once free public area was now a ticketed location. Not to mention the alleged scandals going on with certain local councillors. This all led to a lawsuit between Morecambe Local Council and Noel Edmonds, to which Noel did eventually win, but the story certainly didn't do any favours for the Blobby brand. And so, the park was eventually closed down in 1997, leading to some really dystopian photos of the park in its abandoned state. And perhaps these images are an accurate representation for Mr. Blobby, as by the mid-90s, Blobby mania was clearly coming to an end. People had begun to grow tired of the deranged pink monstrosity, and criticisms against the character began to grow. One famous incident was when Mr. Blobby threw a young girl's birthday cake to the ground, causing her to burst into tears. The father of the young girl then ran up on stage and started punching Mr. Blobby, to which the nation applauded him as a hero, which I just think is fantastic. Happy birthday to the crowd! There was one final attempt with the character, as a new series was released in 1996, titled The All New Adventures of Mr. Blobby, which would now have a much more immature and childlike feel to it, with goofy music thrown in, and more zany plots such as Mr. Blobby becoming Superman or 007. Kinda ironic that this character who was once meant to be a parody of children's television has now become that very thing. Now you have become the very thing you swore to destroy. The series didn't do too well, and by the end of the 90s, the novelty of Mr. Blobby had very much worn out. Blobby mania was over, with even Noel's house party being cancelled in 1999. For me, and possibly you, it really is the end of an era. I hope your memory will be very kind to us after 169. Bye. Since then, Mr. Blobby has mostly disappeared from the spotlight, briefly cameoing in other shows and still maintaining his violent tendency, though it's clear his reappearance is not seen as a welcomed one, as he has punched on the television show this morning. Did you just punch him? <laughs> she just punched him! <laughs> Berated by Simon Cow on Britain's Got Talent. Cheer up, I actually hate this <laughs> and probably most famously of all, Hidden Upon in Fear by Jack Whitehall on Britain's Big Fat Quiz of the Year. How what the fuck were you allowed near kids? <laughs> Would I like to see Mr. Blobby make a return? Probably not. I think he was a fine enough character that served his purpose to prank celebrities, but then very quickly outstayed his welcome. Even though Blobby Mania certainly made its impact on Britain in the 90s, I think we as a nation see Mr. Blobby as less of a mark on the world and more of a big pink stain. <laughs>